صحبت در بورش ما وقتی که ستاب شروع میکنند این روزه خدا با همون من روزه دیمانستراتسی تایور کده من دیگه همون شانو دا میدرم و دیدرم We are already live for Farbina Ah, okay Dashing through the snow, in one horse open sleigh, and for the fields we go, laughing all the way, the bells are not to ring. So I stop saying. Hello, dear friends who are joining us through uh, Facebook and uh, Zoom. Um, we're ha so happy to see you. Welcome to English Without Borders uh, Thursday series of webinars. Today we are uh, hosting Parvina Yakubova, who will be talking about uh, critical thinking uh, in English uh, language uh, teaching. Let me give you some brief uh, introduction about Parvina Yakubova. Parvina Yakubova graduated from Fujian State University Department of Foreign Languages, and she holds her master's degree on in linguistics. She has been teaching English since 2013. In the past, she worked at Arkon Education Group and Secondary School Number no. Four in Pistevars. She is now an ESL teacher, the head of teachers department at, and the English Access Micro Scholarship Program Instructor at NGO Burdofari. Uh, Parvina completed a TESOL methodology course at Open Program, an English language professional development training series sponsored by the U.S. Embassy. Currently, Parvina is a PhD student in linguistic field, the theory of translation. Welcome, Parvina, to uh, English Without Borders webinars. We are, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, we are very happy to host you. Uh, actually, I'd like to remind you that Parvina uh, is one of the uh, presenters at the first uh, English Without Borders National Conference. And uh, Parvina, thank you so much for agreeing to do a webinar with English Without Borders. And now the floor is yours. The floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for having me today, uh, this evening. Uh, this is an amazing evening for me because I'm really excited to be here with you. This is my first ever online webinar. I have conducted just uh, uh, a, a cup, uh, just many trainings. I mean, yeah, I guess, yeah, of, uh, offline, I mean, in person with our local teachers, with our working staff and our staff in educational center. No, but this is my first time when I'm holding online webinar for teachers and I'm very proud and I'm honored just to thank you so much for EVB for giving me such opportunity and uh, if uh, you're ready, shall I start? Yeah, let me. Okay, can you see my screen? 
Uh, not yet. Uh, have you shared that? Okay. Just Can you? Minute. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Yes, we can see it now. Yeah, okay. Okay, thank you. So, and uh, the topic for uh, my uh, webinar is integrating critical thinking in ESL classes. Uh, this is one of the most beloved topics uh, uh, by me. So I like this topic so much. I don't know why, but uh, uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of all the activities and uh, uh, any just uh, games and ESL activities which are connected with critical thinking because this is what our students really need to improve, enhance. And this is one of the, how to say, this is, our, our students weak points I guess just they as, uh, I have noticed uh, that uh, most of the students uh, are just uh, are not good critical thinkers that's why I made my aim to improve to help them to improve their critical thinking why because uh, critical thinking is one of the most uh, important skills in a, of 21st century uh, and uh, okay yeah let me start uh, I want to just, I want to start my presentation with this picture. So just have a look at this picture. I think that this picture just, uh, it, it, it depicts uh, critical thinking uh, in a very good, just uh, an understandable way. Uh, I think that when you look at this picture, uh, when uh, I particularly look at this picture, so here we see that uh, here are uh, some people who are looking at one and the same animal from different sides and uh, uh, they are just uh, all of them think that uh, each uh, body part of the animal animal remain, just uh, remains them uh, one thing, one equipment and all of them are right in their own way. So look at the man which is uh, on the back uh, of the elephant. Uh, is, he says that it's a fan uh, and uh, another man who stands uh, just uh, who uh, uh, who is uh, um, how to say just touching uh, his tail he thinks that it's a rope another man thinks that it's a tree when he looks at his uh, foot and all of them think that uh, uh, this uh, particular body part of the element, uh, elephant just uh, uh, they see that uh, they remain just a uh, uh, one uh, particular equipment and all of them are right in their own way and it doesn't mean that uh, there is any person who is wrong this is the main approach so this is the main idea of teaching critical thinking so uh, when students share their ideas and thoughts they have their own opinion and they all are right there is no person who is wrong who is right uh, all the all the students all people have their own opinion and uh, they are all correct in their own way this is what should be uh, that th this is what should we should take into our consideration while teaching critical thinking so why critical thinking is important uh, you know that uh, there are many skills um, which um, are highly required in 21st century uh, especially in the sphere of education the field of education uh, and that's uh, let's bring an example just let's take an example of these skills which you see in your screen uh, creativity is one of the most important things. Yes, yeah, skills we need to improve in uh, nowadays. Flexibility, uh, communication, collaboration, technology, information literacy, media literacy, leadership. So, and of course, critical thinking. These all skills are should be uh, definitely taught in uh, at schools. I mean, I guess just uh, I I believe that they should be taught there. Yeah? I I think that a person uh, one if uh, a person I mean a student wants to be a future leader, a successful person in life. Yes, uh, he should be aware of all these contemporary poor skills so and critical thinking to my opinion is in the first place so and uh, 
According for, to one of the research uh, made by uh, Cambridge University, uh, uh, so uh, more than a thousand teachers from 81 countries just uh, were uh, as, uh, had a survey and they were asked uh, about the importance of uh, teaching critical thinking. Uh, and 93% uh, of them uh, just uh, they agreed that uh, critical thinking skill is really important, yeah. And this is crucial. It's a vital skill sh which should be taught and learned. Uh, but only 20% uh, agreed that uh, academic English course uh, supports this um, subject. How to say, yeah, uh, this branch of teaching. So, and uh, only 21 percent of the uh, uh, of the uh, survivors yes of the teachers and those who were who were asked yes they agreed they had they have uh, enough uh, materials to teach critical thinking uh, and uh, uh, so, and you know, and unfortunately, however, we know that critical thinking is one of the most important things, yes, skills in, uh, in, uh, in the modern, in our modern, yes, uh, life, yes, contemporary life. Uh, not all the schools, yes, uh, they uh, support uh, uh, teaching, um, not all the curriculums, yes, support teaching critical thinking, and it's not uh, still widely spread. So that's why I think that this so one of the uh, one of the food it's a food for thinking. I mean, uh, just uh, all the educators should think about just including critical thinking activities and strategies uh, in their lessons because this is really important. A good critical thinker, a student who can think critically in future, uh, have more chances to become successful person in life uh, because he is through critical thinking he learns problem solving, decision making, and the these skills are the most important in our life. So, I mean, just not in their career in study, but we need uh, just to, uh, we need to solve some problems, make decisions every day in our uh, usual life. So to be uh, better critical thinking means just to be a more successful person in, in the life. So that's why I think it's really important to teach critical thinking. So, and um, to shorten my speech i don't want to be focused on the theoretical part of uh, my topic uh, now let's have a short practice and uh, uh, today uh, to demonstrate uh, uh, how to teach critical thinking in particularly in english classes i have chosen just um, kind of uh, four or five uh, activities, uh, which are, to my opinion, the most interesting, which I have personally practiced in my classes and are really beloved by my students. And first, I want to start with this amazing uh, activity for critical thinking, which is called speculation. And uh, what's the aim of this activity? Uh, for this activity, uh, what we need to do is a very simple activity and uh, uh, Easy going and really, uh, it, it's not difficult to uh, to get prepared for this activity. And uh, teachers can use it uh, uh, even when they didn't have enough time for preparation. Uh, just uh, what you need, they need to do just. Find unusual picture, or maybe just usual picture, not unusual, yes, just any picture uh, or photo made by macro macro shooting. Macro shooting it means that. Uh, okay, if I have this book, yeah, I want to show this picture, the picture of this book, but I choose only one piece of this book, yes, and zoom it, enlarge it, and uh, ask my students to guess what is the whole picture, how does the whole picture look like, and this is a fun and engaging activity which uh, improves the students' uh, um, critical thinking, and uh, students start uh, thinking about uh, this is uh, uh, about what equipment, what thing is uh, depicted in the picture, they try to find the whole picture. Uh, 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 but you, you must take, you must know that in this activity, the main point that the students, um, there is no student which has correct answer or wrong answer. All the students are right in their own way. And the main point of this activity is that students learn reasoning and giving evidence. Just they look, they look at the picture 
they uh, bring some evidence, they prove their worth. For example, they see a little, uh, uh, just small piece of uh, the book and say that, okay, it's Apple. And when you ask uh, students, why do you think it's Apple? Because then they say, okay, it has kind of, a, uh, um, it has soft and glittering, uh, just a, a surface. Yes, um, it's red. That's why I think it's Apple. It's round. That's why I think it's Apple. Yeah. And uh, some students who have uh, just uh, whose uh, level of English uh, just higher, they will give you just more arguments uh, to prove themselves. And what I really like in this activity is this activity um, uh, engage all students, even those weaker students who usually uh, don't uh, tend to speak, yes, uh, don't dare to speak because they know their level of English is not so high, they are afraid of making mistakes. Uh, but uh, the, for this activity, if they see a picture, they can just say a word, yes? Okay, what is that? Even those students with low level of English, they will say one word, yes? At least what they think it is, yes? Uh, it engages all the students. And this really interesting uh, activity. So, and now I want you to demonstrate how it works. And I kindly ask you uh, to help me, to support me and be active, yeah? Okay, let's see how does it work. Now I will show you a piece of a picture. Uh, a macro shooted picture. So, yeah. Okay. So, do you see this picture? So, and here is the question: What do you see in this picture? What could it be, to your opinion? What What is it? Okay. You can. Uh, you're welcome to write your answers in the chat box. Um, I can see them. Okay. Okay, a track, okay, a record, yeah, thank you. So track for running, okay, great. So you see it's really easy, so yeah, record. So even those students who have low level in, in English, they uh, can be uh, just uh, involved just in the lesson process. Yes, they can say a word at least. It's not so difficult to say a word. Yes, it doesn't require students to speak for too much to uh, be involved in some discussions. Just name a word. Yes, be active. Stripes. Uh -huh. So Diko Parvina says it's stripes. Okay. Um, okay, thank you. And now here is the answer. Yeah. It's a music plate or record, how we say, yeah? Okay, so well, thank you so much. And further on, uh, teacher, uh, to, um, how to say, to uh, make uh, just uh, uh, this uh, activity more interesting. And uh, uh, you can ask students with a high level of English to demonstrate how uh, to, to bring more evidence, support the ideas with the more, with the biggest speeches. Uh, okay, thank you. And I have another picture here. Yeah. What do you see in this picture now? What is there in this picture? Christmas tree. Okay. Malima um, Gulnoro thinks it's a Christmas tree. Aha, snowflake. Yulduz Niazbekova, thank you. Snowflake. Aha, Faridun Yunusov says it's snowflake. Thank you. And write your Christmas tree. Okay, we have uh, such answer as well. So and it's a, uh, exactly, it's a snowflake. Yeah, this is there, right? There. Uh, a ghost. Aha, Fernando Aguiz says it's a ghost for a frozen window. Branch of Christmas tree. You see so many ideas. So all of you are correct in your own way. They're just uh, even if the, the right answer is snowflake, but anywhere you were just uh, right in your own way. Yes, it, it, if the picture remains you just uh, a frozen window, why not? Yes, or okay, anywhere. So what well, is uh, one more point I want to mention about this activity. This is a really good activity for warming up and leading uh, the lessons because when you can adjust, yes, you can adjust uh, the picture. You must, you can choose the picture uh, which can be adjusted to your topic for today's lesson or previous lesson. Uh, for instance, I've, cho I've chosen a snowflake 
because today I'm going to talk about winter, or maybe just I can choose a picture of Santa or Christmas tree, uh, just to, because today I have a lesson about Christmas, yeah, New Year, or we had a previous lesson was conducted with Christmas or winter, so uh, that's why uh, you can use, all you need is uh, uh, teachers can use their fancy imagination, creativity, and connect them, adjust them in their lesson, yeah? Okay, thank you. And one more picture. This is the last picture for this activity. And yeah, what do you see in this picture? I think it's obvious. I think it's too obvious. Okay, fill off. Yeah. Okay. Fill off. Yeah. Critical thinking enhances creativity. Yeah, really. So we, we the teachers, uh, should be critical thinking uh, thinkers as well. Okay, Plov, yes, right here, I, I said that Dastarhan, ah, is this is your, okay, we have Dastarhan, okay, Dastarhan, okay, table close, you mean, thank you, and yes, right you are, I, as I said before, uh, this picture was kind of uh, more obvious to find, yeah, okay, thank you, holiday table, yeah, Malima Zaripova, yes, uh, you have a bigger imagination than us, as usual, says the holiday table, thank you, and yeah, and let's go ahead to the next activity. Thank you so much for your active participation, dear teachers. And cause and effect. Cause and effect is a very, very, how to say, it's a really important, it's absolute working uh, activity. Uh, students like this activity. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, according to this activity, so it, it is a very good activity for making bigger sentences just uh, from uh, short uh, sentences, short ideas, just uh, how to make bigger sorts and bigger ideas. Uh, when we students usually, uh, when we usually ask students to answer some question, they have short answer. Uh, cause and effect activity requires them just make bigger speech. Okay, let's say, uh, how does it work? And uh, so this is one of the activities according to which students um, uh, it, we must, uh, so teachers must give two simple sentences uh, to students and uh, students must um, take, make one big sentence out of two thing, sentences. So using linking words, conjunctions, yeah, prepositions, etc. So, and uh, for instance, give students two simple sentences. Ravshan forgot his book at school. And the next sentence is, he couldn't do his homework. And students must join these sentences to make one bigger sentence. And they, they, uh, as a result, Ravshan couldn't do this ho his homework because he forgot his book at school. Uh, don't forget to uh, remember uh, to remember that it's really important to use uh, linking words or how to say signal words uh, while you're making cause and effect sentences because without them it's really difficult to uh, to join together two sorts two ideas to make one big idea so and here are the examples of signal words they are because so since as a result if then therefore do after why and back and don't forget to remember that this uh, the sentence must have one sentence should be the cause and the second is effect the cause is the reason for something and effect is the result for something the cause or uh, reason usually uh, it uh, uh, answers uh, the question why why something is happening for example uh, Raushan couldn't do his homework why because uh, what happened because he forgot his book at school so, and I think that this picture, this table, uh, it demonstrates uh, um, the main idea what I'm telling now. Okay, and let's pass to another slide. Yeah, let's have a short practice, cause and effect activities. So you see here some pictures. Actually, you can use the parts of the sentences as well. 
you can give one as we demonstrated, as I have demonstrated, yeah, we can give two parts of sentences and uh, or matching activities, yes, uh, match the causes with the effects. And uh, uh, students must join two parts of the sentences using uh, linking words. But actually, instead of sentences, you can use pictures as well. It, and it works better because visual aids uh, are more effective, yeah, just uh, they, it always works. So here you see in this picture, uh, six pictures, uh, one pair of picture uh, must be transferred into one big sentence. Let's try together. Okay, in the first picture, the uh, action is studying hard. The word is, uh, keyword is studying hard, I mean key phrase. And uh, the next one uh, is a university degree. How, how can we join these cause and effect uh, sentences? I mean, yes, the phrases, pictures, to make one big sentence. Can you please help me, dear teachers? Again, this task is uh, for you. Uh, okay, we have already just active teachers who have written their sentences in here in the chat box beforehand. Yeah, so studying hard and university degree. Can you make a sentence out of these two sentences to join them together? Studying hard, university degree. If you study hard, you'll get the university degree. Yeah, thank you. He's studying hard because he wants to get a university degree. Yes, and we, vice versa. We can change the places as well. So uh, he got a university degree because he studied hard. Yes, okay. John is studying hard to enter the university. Yes, thank you. Big thanks to you all. He has got the university degree because he worked hard. Yeah, great, super. So, and you see, we have the same pictures uh, again here. In order not to waste too much time, I um, let's just pass to another activity. But I think that you got the main idea what I'm, uh, I'm going to just uh, tell you, yeah? Okay, thank you. And uh, let me pass to another slide. Yeah, okay. And now let's uh, try uh, let's try to make the things more difficult and complicated because uh, the first task was really easy, and this is kind of variation of cause and effect. Uh, I know that uh, the previous activity which I have just demonstrated to you for cause and effect was uh, it was a, a well known activity, I think that all the teachers know about this, but now what I'm going to trail uh, to show you in this slide is I think I hope that it's a kind of new thing but and uh, it will be some new uh, activity for you, and I hope that you will try it in your own classes. So this is a variation. I uh, this is uh, how we can use the cause and effect activity um, to make it more interesting, more engaging, and to enable students to be uh, uh, to to think more. And now, according to the rules, ask your students to fill in the gap with a sentence which connects the first and the third ones. So here we, uh, we have not two uh, parts for sentences, but three parts. And the main idea is that we give students do only the first part of the sentence, I mean the statement, and then the conclusion. But they need to find the evidence for that con conclusion. And uh, if you look at this table, uh, you can make this uh, very small, simple table on the whiteboard and uh, ask students to draw this uh, table uh, on their uh, notebooks so that they could uh, make their own sentences. And now you give, you, uh, you give students a, a statement. For example, in the first uh, sta the statement, uh, you see chess cannot be played in three or alone. And you give the last uh, conclusion. You can play, uh, you can only play uh, chess in two. Why? What's the evidence? How can we know that it is can be played only in two? So the evidence is that you or students try to support uh, the conclusion. This is to support the statement with the evidence to make uh, just a uh, clear conclusion. So the game has two types of pieces and two sides. That's why you can only play chess in two. 
So, and you see how three little ideas they are transferred in one big idea. I mean, uh, we can if we make, we can even make a, a one big sentence out of three these three ideas. Yes, simple uh, three uh, little sentences and small sentences. And this is a very good activity uh, to enable students to be better speakers. Because when we usually ask students, for example, yeah, for instance, I ask my students, okay, what's your favorite food? They say. I like plof. And when we say why, we usually hear um, just silence, or just one word, yep, yeah, it's tasty, it's delicious, and that's all. And they are not usually, uh, students are not able to support their statement, to support their opinions and give uh, definite, yes, um, conclusions. And this activity helps students to think deeper about their questions. Okay, if you like plov, if your favorite food is plov, okay, why is it? So why do you like it? Please be kind to bring more evidence and support to conclude your opinion. And that's in this case, uh, if uh, the more we practice this activity with our students, uh, uh, I think that the better speakers they will be. Okay, and the second, the next uh, example is about a cheetah. So it's a cheetah. And the last statement you give them the first part, it's a cheetah, the first part of the idea, the statement, and you give them a conclusion. You can't, um, okay, sorry, something is wrong. Ah, oh, yeah. Okay, so it's a cheetah. And the last part of the sentence, you can't take, uh, you can't overtake him. Okay, it's a cheetah, you can't overtake him. Why? Because its speed exceeds 80 kilometers an hour. So making one big sentence from these two, uh, three parts, you can just uh, transfer a big sentence, transfer uh, these three ideas into one big sentence. Yeah, it's a cheetah, and its speed exceeds eighty kilometers per hour. Thus, you can't overtake him. You see how these three little ideas uh, push them. Yes, enable students to make be a bit, uh, better, bigger sorts, bigger ideas. So this is how it works. The, uh, this, this is the main idea of this activity. Uh, when I usually uh, listen to my students who don't give me a full feedback, a full answer, it really disappoints me. And I always think about why I can't enable the student for better speaking why one student can speak uh, on one topic for more than two, three minutes and one and why another student can say just a couple of words, what to do. I think that uh, this activity will help you to make students, uh, to push students even to be better speakers. And let's have a try, let's have a practice again. And now I will give you two uh, parts of the one uh, big idea. And you must find out uh, uh, the second, uh, the, uh, the middle of the sentence. Yeah. Okay. The statement is, the opinion is, Anissa is the best student. This is my opinion. Anissa is the best student. And I tell you, you don't have any chance to win. I mean, there is a, some competition and I tell to my students, one of my students, okay, Anissa is the best student. You don't have any chance to win. And he asks why? Bring me evidence, please, teacher. Okay, I say, okay, Anissa is the best student. He has got the highest score for the last three months. So you don't have any chances to win. Okay, yeah, now I see that you really supported your statement, your idea, your opinion with the evidence. And now, and now I believe you that I don't have any chance. I have to try more, yeah? Okay, now, and let's do it this way. I want to give you one statement. Yes, it's a, let's do it together. I want to, uh, to find out the piece of the um, sentence, the evidence. Okay, for example, I say, it's a diamond. Okay, I have a diamond in my hand, in my hand, so I said, it's a diamond, will be rich. Okay, my, so I, my statement is, it's a diamond, and my conclusion is, will be rich. Okay, what evidence can bring us to this conclusion? How can I be rich? Okay, can you uh, give any idea? Uh, Parvina, excuse me, uh, we have got already several answers for 
Um, oh, yeah, so yeah. Then, uh, if you want me to read them to you, I can do that. If not, you can read them. Uh, I'm going to okay. stop yes. the demonstration yeah. of chat yeah. box. Yes, uh, is, it disrupted my uh, yeah, screen. Sure. Oh, yeah, oh, sure. thank you. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I have so active participants and I didn't notice it. Okay, yeah, it costs billions. Yes, it's a diamond. It costs billions of dollars will be rich. Yeah, it's a diamond. We'll sell it. It be, uh, will be rich. Yes, okay. Yeah, great answers. Thank you so much. And now, uh let's do the things more complicated yeah okay and now i want to give you only first part of the statement only the statement only opinion yeah she's a teacher let's think of the evidence and some conclusion for this uh statement so do you want she's an do you english want me teacher to read the answers because we have already got the answers yeah 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 I, i'm i'm just looking through okay she's an english teacher she graduated okay. the university with honors so she was accepted to this job yeah great answer you see okay and also the variation can be maybe she's a teacher um she start, uh, she knows everything so we can ask her yeah let it be so that will be a great sentence too you see it re it's really uh, interesting activity she's a teacher Firuz Kakroyev says, okay, she's a teacher and uh, I, as her friend, I have to study harder than others. Okay, thank you. So yeah, this is how the activity work. And I think if you there, if you just uh, uh, think about, uh, uh, think uh, if you use it, yes, uh, uh, in your classes, it will be perfect. It will enable students to be better speakers, believe me. Okay, and now, uh the key activity i'm going to introduce you today i think that some of you have already um you got acquainted with this activity on my master class in evb um uh, uh, conference export uh, it's six thinking hats activity I adore this activity. It's really interesting activity. My students love it uh, too. But uh, this activity requires you more time. Um, just uh, it requires your students more time to get adjusted to, to get used to, to this activity. But uh, gradually, time by time, I think that uh, it will be one of your favorite activities because it's uh, it. Uh, enable students to join, to collaborate. Uh, it's a really good idea to use this uh, six thinking hats activity. I mean, in group discussions and decision making and problem solving. And I think it's a perfect uh, activity. So in here, I, I have just uh, chosen some um, pictures of my own lessons where how I tried this activity with my class. Okay, now, uh, yeah, what's the main idea of a six thinking hat activity? Okay, uh, the main idea is that we usually, okay, let's imagine the situation when we want to say something to us to make, solve some problem in a group, each of us have their own opinion and each of us want to uh, just uh, prove that, that our own opinion, we think, that okay, I am right. Another third person says, says, no, I am right. Yes, you are wrong. Okay. And we join together as usual, we join together to solve some problem. But as a result, we come to some argue, you know, maybe sometimes even fightings. Yeah. We can't come to one conclusion. And usually it ends with a situation when we don't uh, just uh, solve any problems, but we stay and we make things uh, more difficult and worse. And this activity helps uh, us uh, just uh, to think in one direction but taking into consideration all the points of view not leaving anyone's uh, point of view it is called the parallel thinking when you are not just thinking adversely yes in uh, adversal way but parallel thinking i mean all the speakers have their own uh, uh, sort their own opinion and they are all right and all their opinions should help to solve one particular problem and make one decision 
And uh, this acti activity, six, um, thinking hats activity, it was uh, created um, by Edward de Bono, by one of the most favorite uh, psychologists. Um, and uh, uh, you see his picture here, yeah? Is uh, the author of uh, several books of the book, Six Thinking Hats, particularly two. It is a bestseller. Uh, and now, what is the main idea? of this activity. Okay, so six thinking hats are, uh, they are just six different colors. Six colors of hats for six types of thinking. So six thinking hats uh, uh, takes into consideration six types of thinking, uh, because usually it is proved that people think it's six uh, different ways. Some people are more emotional. Some people are more uh, optimists. Uh, some people are, are just kind of pessimists. Yes, some people are creative. Some people don't like thinking a lot. They just uh, want to rule, yes, and control the process. And uh, some people are just, uh, they are usually focused on data, information, and numbers, and don't, they don't think about their feelings. Uh, and uh, they usually uh, pay attention to arguments and facts. So these are different kinds of thinkings, and uh, each of us, um, uh, each of us have their, our own uh, thinking hat. But what if we could use all these six uh, colors uh, in our life to make better decisions, not to look at some problem just from the one side, but from different sides to make better uh, decisions and uh, to uh, make better plans, yes, to be more creative. So, uh, six hats are really easy to put on and take off. Okay, uh, six thinking hats activity makes uh, students uh, more flexible thinkers who will uh, uh, who will take into the consideration others' fair points of view, uh, who will um, respect. Uh, they appear as point of view, not uh, without arguing, yes. Okay, and this uh, it makes just um, students really good thinkers, flexible thinkers. Uh, in this activity can be applied to any situation, not only in, uh, in the lesson, but in our uh, usual life as well. So, and, uh, and the students who learn how to use this has, they usually, as a result, in future become better think, think or smart, as, as uh, they start to think smarter in future, and uh, to look at one problem from different sides. Okay, and uh, let's see, at, let's have a look at the features of each hat. What does it mean, six hats, each colors, what do they mean particularly? So white hat is a fact hat. Uh, red hat is a feelings hat. And blue hat is a control hat. Green hat is a creativity hat. Yellow hat is a positive hat. Uh, it's a, a yellow is a color of sun, sunshine, positiveness. And black hat is a negative hat. How, how, to, how can we understand it, yeah? Okay, what are the main questions for each hat? Okay, let's have a deeper look at it. So, and the process, blue hat is a process. So process, it means that there are in one group, uh, when you deliver all the hats, for you, when you share the, uh, those hats among the class, so your students uh, wear each student wears one color, or you can divide your your students your um, class into groups in teams and give them one particular hat, and each each team can be uh, will be responsible for each color. For example, those team or those student who has got a blue hat, this is a control hat. It's a usually it's a leader of the team who controls the process uh, of the activity. And those students who wear white hats, uh, they are usually focused on information and data. For example, for our topic for today is using mobile phones damage our vision, yes? Do you agree or disagree? Okay, those students who wear white hats, they try, they start collecting some data, make some research on the internet and find out what is the real uh, just situation, yeah? What, how does the real situation look like? Is it really damageful to just uh, use mobile phone? Is it really uh, dangerous? 
or not yes okay some to collect some data about phones about using phones how many uh, percent of the uh, people yes they use the phones every day for um, two three hours I don't know just okay everything which is connected with that with data and numbers and facts um, and the red hat the red hat is a failing hat those students who wear a red hat they don't pay attention to facts and data to arguments, they forget about everything, they just think about their feelings. Okay, I think that mobile phones are bad because I don't like them. Or I think that mobile phones are really good because I can't imagine my life without them. My parents usually just uh, tell me not to use mobile phones, yes, uh, for so long, but I really like it. I adore mobile phones. So I have a good feelings about phones or uh, about anything else. So you usually take consideration to your consideration, only your feelings and red hats, um, all, uh, they are mostly focused on adjectives, adjectives. So, and green hat, green hat is responsible, it's a, it's a creativity hat. This is the, my, one of my most favorite hats because usually when I try to solve some problem in our daily life, usual life, I, uh, tell, I, I, I think in different ways. And I, I'm, I really like this hat. This is the hat, creativity hat. It, it, it brings ideas and possible solutions. The yellow hat is a positive hat. It thinks about positive sides of, of this or that problem. And black hat is a critic. So it thinks about uh, difficulties we can face, yes, while solving this problem. So it usually uh, gives the question like, what if, yeah? It spots the risks uh, about the weak sides and dangerous sides of uh, some idea, yes? Okay, and uh, this is the most, uh, it and gives logical reasons um, to all, so okay, we, uh, to all the, uh, the opinions which we hear yes we can just give the logical um summary okay and now let's have a short practice again time to practice this activity i want to demonstrate. okay uh, we can use six thinking hats in all uh, to to teach all the skills. Yes, reading, speaking, writing, uh, and sometimes listening too. Uh, those uh, students who think uh, who uh, wear six thinking hats become a really good uh, debaters. Uh, it evokes students to more uh, better effective discussions and let's have it, uh, but I'm going to show you just a couple of uh, the activities uh, in, in which six thinking hats can be adjusted. So the first is finish me stories. This is a very good idea. So when I um, first met this uh, activity, I, okay, it is particularly uh, my idea, my own idea how we can use six thinking hats. Because when I uh, first get, got acquainted with six thinking hat activities, it was really difficult for me to find the ways uh, how to adjust this activity into my own lessons. I thought about different situations as yes, activities, but it was not so easy easy but then I started to uh, think um uh, started to think about my uh, own uh, to create my own lesson plans according to this activity and one of my uh, successful ideas I guess yeah because it really worked in one of my lessons and since that I started to use it every lesson in many many groups so finish me stories there are there is a good idea you can just search on and google finish me stories there are a huge number of uh, unfinished stories which you can meet, uh, which you can download on the, in the internet. So the main idea is that you take one particular story which has no ending, it is unfinished story. Like in an example you see in this picture. So this picture just gives you the start, the beginning of the story, just uh, it maybe sometimes it's climax or, or not, okay, but it doesn't have a conclusion. The main idea is that you, us, uh, your students must think about the end of the story. What happened next? 
and they must write or maybe they must uh, create, they must say the end of the story. And to think, to uh, create the end of the story, they need to wear six thinking hats. Some students say, okay, let's do it this way. Yeah, let's uh, end the story with in this way. And another says, okay, we have these facts. No, no, no. Yes, okay, let's uh, pay attention. Or Black Hat says, okay, we shouldn't do this because in this case, we'll have some challenges. Okay, I don't like, the Red Hat says that, okay, I don't like the ending for the story. I want to, it to have a happy end. Okay, and collaborating with each other, students uh, bring up one big idea uh just uh, and to a big decision and think about the end of the story uh and i mean just the green hat thinks about the creates uh the end of the story and then yellow hat black hats they just analyze the end of the story and share their own idea okay this is not a good uh, uh, end for the story because it has some um, okay disadvantages and yellow hat says okay it's a great idea let's use it yes and uh, white hats uh, just the things about data yes think uh, okay it's really interesting and engaging uh, activity for example when i last uh, um, uh, we you know this uh, favorite um, one of the famous uh, uh, tales of Cinderella. We used to we use this activity, and my students uh, uh, just created uh, the new ending for the story Cinderella. It was really interesting, and you can try it. Yes, uh, White Hat can uh, only think about the main heroes. When is the story happening? Where? Yes, what are the main features of the story? And the uh, negative uh, black hat says that, okay, um, the, about the negative sides of the story, maybe all oh, some particular hero and po uh, yellow hat shares about the positive sides of the story and etc. Okay, the next is a group work. For group work to make, uh, to bring a big discussion, you can just give them one topic, give students one topic and share six hats to each group. One group of students wears white hat and you ask them, okay, the topic is school. The topic for the lesson, for example, is school. I chose the school. Okay, prepare one minute talk about your school, including uh, as many facts and numbers and data about your school as you can without argumentation. Okay, and red hat. For red hat group, you say prepare one minute talk about your school, including as much information about uh, as many positive and uh, negative adjectives as you can. They use only adjectives about their school. Black hat, prepare one minute talk about your school, including as much information about its shortcomings and negative sides, I mean disadvantages as possible. Problems at school, yeah, which students don't like. And yellow hat group prepares one minute talk about their school by adding as many possible facts, I mean, oh, sorry, positive facts and features of their own school as possible. And the green hat prepares one minute talk about their school by adding as many future innovation ideas as they can. Okay, all these negative sides, uh, disadvantages of their schools, advantages, problems, feelings, bring them into idea of thinking of the better school for them. If they try to innovate, invent uh, their school or about think about future innovations in their school. And at last, Blue Hats prepare one minute talk about their school, including as many interesting ideas and examples presented by other groups. So here's a great uh, idea for discussion. You can use this activity and it really works. I tried it. And uh, the last one is Six Thinking Hat is a good tool which can be used in discussion and debates. For example, you can give just one topic for discussion or for debate. Uh, you see, for instance, we see here some examples. Yes, parents can watch their kids' classes where while uh, video conferencing. Is it good or bad? Let's make some debates. Okay, students wear their hats, they share their feelings. I like this idea, I don't like this idea, I'm confused. Okay, and uh, yellow hat says, Okay, it's a great idea because 
blah, blah, blah. Yes, okay. And the black hat says, okay, we don't like this idea. Parents shouldn't take the control over their children, uh, at least at school, yeah? Okay. And uh, another thing, another topic is blue hat talk, uh, is uh, people rotate jobs so they work a different job each day. Okay, what ha will happen? What would happen if all the people could work in different jobs every way? Today, I want to be a teacher. Tomorrow, I want to be a doctor and etc. So you can use this, you can find many activities. So all the topics for discussion and debating can be, uh, can be run through six thinking head activity and it's really effective. The most important thing I think is that you need just to, time you the teachers and also students need the time to get acquainted to just adjust to get used to use this activity it requires time it's not easy to conduct great activity just from the first time yes but gradually you uh, learn how to use and your lessons will be more effective and yeah Thank you, a bunch of thanks for you. Uh, you were really great uh, participants and uh, my hat off to those of uh, uh, you who will effectively use all this activity in your lessons. And thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Parvina, for such a nice excellent presentations and so many interesting activities uh, i've learned so many new ones thank you so much i believe that the same uh, has the audience so uh we have got some questions um a question from uh judith Elliot. how old were the students in finish me stories uh, finish the story uh yes great question actually when I usually work with stories and, um, okay, it depends on the story. Uh, when uh, I teach, uh, I mean, young learners, uh, not kids, uh, but young learners uh, uh, till sixth, seventh grade, yeah? The, uh, the age 13, 14, till 13, 14, I usually have just uh, give them readings, uh, passages. Uh, some fairy tales, yes, stories, Cinderella, the barn, I mean, color book, yes, uh, okay, the barn, and uh, and uh, I use fairy tales, and I ask them to change the ending for the story, and for Finish Me, uh, activity is the best and suitable mostly for a younger learners. But uh, we can adjust it to uh, just, um, how to say, adults as well. But mostly I use it with younger learners, Finnish me stories, because they are mostly available. Uh, the uh, most uh, Finnish me worksheets are available for uh, younger learners. Thank you, Parvina. <clears throat> Uh, Meha Hujaivar is interested in the source of the activities that you have uh, used. Uh, do you have any special websites that you have taken these activities from? If you can share those, please. Oh. Okay, if it's possible, I, uh, is it really possible? I can share many or uh, just uh, sites, yes. I can share the links uh, maybe after the, we finish uh, uh, our webinar because right now I think that it will be uh, plain difficult for me to write everything to type, yeah? But Arina, uh, you know, what, what we can do, what we can do, you can provide those links in your presentation, your PowerPoint presentation because we will upload that in ah, our, web, yes. on our website mm -hmm. so that those who want to uh, access those, they can, you know, go to our website okay. and uh, download your presentation, your PowerPoint presentation, where you have the links in, okay? Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, I will send you uploaded version of my presentation with the links. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I, yes. I didn't yeah. think beforehand that someone will ask me about size. Okay, actually... Yeah. So I use different sites, different links, many, many sites, but one of my best, you know, my most beloved platform is SkyTeach. 
it's in Russia, not in English, but I really like, I adore those mentors, teachers who teach there, who uh, just conduct webinars and uh, streams, and they are really resourceful, interesting. I usually listen to them and take some notes and uh, try to use their new ideas, and they all work. I, I, use, I like SkyTeach platform. Yeah, sure. I mean, dear participants, uh, if you are interested in uh, uh, those links that uh, Parvina is usually using the resources from, so please uh, go to our website, www.ewb.tj. You will find uh, Parvina's presentation there along with the links provided, okay? So uh, our next question is from uh, Nasiba. She's asking how to boost critical thinking in adult learners. Oh, yes, critical thinking for adult learners. Okay, uh, you know, um, I was just trying to say that uh, I had much things to say, but the, the time was, uh, we have a limit of time because if you allow me, I could speak for hours and hours. Okay, and for adults groups, I usually, you know, uh, we can use the variation of uh, Finnish me stories and uh, 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 replace stories with the videos. And, uh, in, you know, I, what, I re, what I do in my own practice, I show my students, I mean my adult groups, some videos in, in the climax. You know, what is the climax? Yes, it's the most interesting part of the story when something really, really uh, so important, yes, happens. But in this climax part, I just stop uh, the uh, video and ask my students to guess what will happen next. They will tell me just, uh, okay, they will share their ideas. They will say, okay, she will be crying. Okay, if the hero, if there are just, uh, okay, let it be the last video when I showed my adult students, mm, it, they were age uh, of 30, I mean 30, 35, something like that. Okay, I showed them a video when a, a couple were just arguing with each other. I mean, a man and a woman. And at last, I stopped the frame and asked them what will happen next. Yes, some uh, one, I have two individual students, yes, a group. Uh, okay, one of them said that they will, um, uh, how to say, they will get divorced, yes, break out. And another said, okay, they will uh, rejoin together again and something like this. They, you just stop the video and ask them, about the ending, yes, of the story, and they can predict it. So it is very interesting. And also discussions, as I told you, you give them a topic and they discuss the topic. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Parvina. We have a question from Fernando from El Salvador. Um, he's saying, during the webinar, you showed many critical thinking activities. What about teachers? How important is critical thinking for teacher development? Oh, yes, it's a great question for teacher development. Okay, let me say one, let me bring one example. Um, you know, when, uh, okay, recently I have left one of my jobs, uh, unfortunately, and fortunately at the same time, I guess. So, but it was really difficult for me to make this decision. Uh, it was really hard for me to work in two places that I needed to wear those hats. Yes, okay, I wear the hats that the white hat, like, yes, what facts do I have when I have two jobs? Yes, okay, I earn more. I earn more, yes, I will uh, have a better career in future, yes, uh, this and that. And then I veered my red hat and said, okay, I'm really proud of be working in two places because I have a chance to have more students. I will be just, uh, uh, okay, how does, maybe more popular teacher, yes, okay, but when I uh, veered uh, about uh, uh, my black head, I thought, okay, no, I will not have enough time for my own children, for my housing, and it's not a good idea for women to work in two places because it will be really difficult for me to catch my household routines, my job, my children, okay, I should leave one of them, and at last I wear my uh, green head and said, okay, no, to one job and said, okay, I'll be staying here in my Gordoferit, beloved Gordoferit, it's my job, and I will be working only in here, and I think that uh, tree can make, uh, to, can deepen its roots only in one place, yes, uh, if we say yes, okay. Um, 
and I think that working in one place is better than in two places. Yeah. Okay. And I made then I made the decision and left my first job and stayed in here. Okay. In this way, we can make decisions every day. As I told you before, six thinking hat is not just uh, an activity which can be used only uh, in the lessons. Uh, it is the really uh, it's a crucial uh, skill which we need in our everyday life because every day may we make decisions big or small every day we solve problems big and small and we must think for about different sides of one problem to make better decisions and not to fail in our life i guess oh thank you parvina you have engaged our participants to such an extent that we are having you know questions coming one after another but our uh, time is, you know, uh, we already are running out of the time, but I will uh, just maybe take one more question and then we'll wrap up. So Azra is asking, can we do visual thinking as a way of critical thinking for adults too? For example, art paintings, questions and explanations. Aha, uh -huh. explanations, okay. Visual thinking as well. Okay, yes, of course. Yeah, when I told you, if you notice in the first activity which I have demonstrated, uh, which I have demonstrated you, I used pictures, yes, uh, micro shooting of the picture. So uh, actually, you can use any picture. Maybe it can be the picture of Mona Lisa. We can have a great discussion about this picture when you show the frame some piece of this picture and try the students to guess what is the picture or whose uh, painter's picture is demonstrated in here. So you can start your topic on art uh, and you can use this picture like uh, uh, how to say warm up or leading activity. And uh, I think it will be a great idea, but actually uh, to be honest, uh, from my own experience, I can say that I, I'm not just a kind of big fan of uh, using, uh, how to say, uh, arts in my own lessons, because um, uh, when I, uh, how to say, and, and I, I don't mean that I'm not a fan, but it's a little bit difficult for me to get my students engaged while teaching art. I think that the more interesting topics for them are those topics which are, which are close to their own life, yes, which require their needs, the topic like food, yes, junk food, I mean, yes, the problems at school, teenage problems, bullying, for example, we had a great discussion through six thinking head activities recently with my access group, which was about bullying, it was a great uh, lesson, and maybe, yes, exact, actually, I don't have a big uh, practice, yes, of using arts um, the, through these activities, teaching, I mean, teaching arts. Yeah, thank you, Parvina. I believe that you have so many other activities that you want to share with us, but maybe uh, that will be in our next webinar and we will be happy to host you, right? Yeah, uh, for sure. I have yeah, a, so. it's a plethora of ideas of in other topics uh, and I will sure. be really glad. And after yeah. this, my first time ever, it, uh, uh, as I mentioned, this is my first ever time of holding uh, uh, online webinars. Now uh, I was really, uh, how to say, uh, worried and I was uh, um, embarrassed, but now I see that everything will be fine gradually. Yeah, I you did a great job. Years. Yes, okay, it was my practice. Yeah. Yeah, it was great. And I think that next time it will be easier. You did a great job and you might have noticed yourself that uh, all the participants were so engaged. You know, uh, we have so many comments thanking you for your great webinar and there's so many new activities our participants learned from this, from today's webinar. And uh, we appreciate, Arvina, your time and your contribution to sharing your knowledge and experience with the English teachers, not only from Tajikistan, because today's webinar uh, is joined by uh, teachers from Mexico, Kyrgyzstan, Salvador, Brazil. So um, thank you. Thank you for, you know, uh, giving your time and, you know, sharing your knowledge with uh, the teaching community around the globe. Um, Thank you, dear participants, for such an engaging uh, participation. And uh, I'd like to take this opportunity 
uh, to congratulate uh, everyone with the upcoming holidays, those who are celebrating Christmas and the upcoming New Year 2022. So I'd like to uh, say that English Without Borders wish each and every one of you a healthy new year, prosperous new year. You are great teachers and you're shaping our future. So uh, we will see everyone next year because uh, next Thursday, we are not going to have the uh, webinar. We are all preparing for uh, the new year. And we will see uh, you uh, next year on January the 6th, 2022. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Happy New Year. Great teachers. Thank you. Thank Bye. You.